Hey, Christine here from Portable Entrepreneur. Today I want to talk about something that's really, really important. And these are the seven reasons why you continue to attract low quality and low paying clients. And more importantly, what to do about that so you can stop and finally attract these higher paying, better quality clients all around. Now, the reason that I am bringing this up is because this seems to be, for some reason, a widespread problem. I hear so many entrepreneurs trying to to get into web design and SEO and marketing that they're just finding client after client after client that doesn't have the budget, that can't afford them, that just drives them nuts. And I really want to make sure that you can get past that so you enjoy your business. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Now, before I get into these, let me just say that some of these reasons may feel a little bit harsh. They may be hard to hear, a little bit hard to swallow. Please know that I do this because I care and I want you to succeed. And because of that, I feel it is my job to tell you what it is that you need to hear and not just what it is that you want to hear. Because if I tell you what you want to hear, well, you're not going to grow. You're going to stay in the same place you are right now. So I do this because I care about your success. So please take it in that way. So I apologize, but I don't. So let's get into the seven reasons why you are attracting these low quality, low paying clients and what to do about it. All right, reason number one, I'm sorry, but it's all you're looking for. You're only looking for these low paying clients. And I know you're thinking, Psh, no, I'm not. I want the high paying clients. I'm looking high and low, but they're nowhere. I'm not looking for these, but I want you to go back and actually look at the actions that you've been taking. Have you been approaching anyone who is a higher paying, higher quality client? So let me give you an example. A lot of times I hear entrepreneurs who are just getting started and like, hey, I'm, I'm a new startup, I'm a new designer, I'm a new marketer, and I wanna go help these businesses. So, hmm, who am I gonna start with? I am gonna help startups. But guess what? Startups have a lot of expenses and no revenue. So that makes it really hard for them, not necessarily that they're a low quality client, but they don't have the budget to pay you more because they simply just don't have the revenue, even if they see all of the value that you can provide. So we gotta make sure that we are talking to the high quality clients. We cannot possibly get any high quality, high paying clients if we're not at all talking to them. So what can we do about that? What I would encourage you to do is make a list of any of the businesses that you have been talking to and more specifically, write down anything about them that you recognize. What is their budget? How much revenue do they have coming in Per, per year or per client? What is their average customer value? How long have they been in business? How many employees does the business have? This will start to tell you a lot and you're likely going to start seeing patterns with these businesses that you've been talking to. Now, what I want you to do is start looking at the businesses that you would love to have as a client and look at those same criteria. How many years have they been in business? What is their average customer value? How much revenue do they make per year? And so on. And you will start to see the difference between who you are talking to and who you want to talk to. So now stop talking to the businesses that meet that initial criteria of who you're talking to now and only start talking to the businesses that meet your new criteria of these clients who have the budget are gonna be these higher quality, high paying clients. All right, number two. Ooh, I'm sorry, this one might sting a little bit too, but it could be the truth. And this is that you may be attracting low quality, low paying clients because it's all you believe you're worth. And that really holds true for a lot more people than you might think. So if that's something that you are wondering, am I good enough? Am I worth that higher amount? If these are some of the things that you might be thinking, you're not alone. I mean, especially if you are just getting started, it's harder to, to recognize that value. And we're gonna talk about that in a second. But if you yourself do not believe that you are worth that higher price, you're not going to ask for that higher price. So the only way to fix that is to start working on what is it that I need to do that would help me feel that I am worth 
that higher price. And this may be something that you need to talk out. And I really would encourage you to do that, especially with someone who is in this business and can help you really work through that and understand where you're coming from, because that is very important. All right. Number three. Number three is a lack of confidence, which again is a hard, especially when you haven't worked with a lot of clients, you haven't built uh, a lot of proof around what you do. You may feel that there's something you need to do in your business that hasn't quite happened yet. So it holds you back from actually going out there and speaking with clients. So here's what I see. I see a lot of entrepreneurs that I work with and they all want the same thing. They all want to grow their business, right? And there's this lack of confidence when there really hasn't been any business just yet. And there's really only one way to build that confidence. And unfortunately, it's taking action, even though you don't have the confidence. So the ones who are make it say, Ooh, you know what? I need to do X, Y, or Z. And boy, is that scary. And boy, is that outside of my comfort zone, but huh, I'm going to go and I'm going to do it anyway. And I'll report back. And then there's those who go, Ooh, this is scary. This is tough. I think I'll go edit the text on my website for a while. And they don't actually get out there and take the action that they need to because they lack that confidence. But that confidence isn't just going to come. You can't just put it out there, I want to have more confidence. And then one day, wake up and you have more confidence. You're going to gain that confidence through action. All right. Number four has to do with your portfolio. You may be attracting low quality or low paying clients because your portfolio, it's full of low quality and low paying clients. So your portfolio is only going to be as strong as really the worst project that you have in there. Not necessarily that you have a bad project in there, but it's only going to be good as well, whatever project you feel is the least good that's in your portfolio. So for instance, I hear a lot of entrepreneurs who say, you know what? I want to be a web designer. I want to have a web design business. I don't have a portfolio. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go contact a nonprofit organization and I'm going to build their website to gain some experience. Now, if all you want to do is gain some experience and build up your confidence, wonderful. If you want to help a nonprofit organization out who needs that help, wonderful. If you want to work with that nonprofit in order to put that work inside your portfolio in order to show new potential clients, well, then you got to think about it. Does that nonprofit represent the type of client that I want to have in the future? And if it doesn't, that's where you need to second guess this. You see, when you want to have higher paying clients, you are actually weeding them out when they come to your portfolio and they look and all they see is these businesses that don't look like them, that don't represent them. And you've actually now sent them away because your portfolio doesn't represent that type of client. So you have to be very intentional with how you design your portfolio and make sure you are designing it around the type of person and type of business that you want to see that portfolio and think, yeah, that's someone I want to work with. They get me and my type of business. Alrighty, we're on to number five already, which is similar to your portfolio, but it has to attract the right type of client. And this is your prices. Now, this may not be a surprise. You are attracting low paying clients because, well, you're just not charging enough. Now, if you have followed me for any length of time, you may have heard this story before. Uh, so if you have, well, excuse me for 30 seconds, but I want to share this story because it really highlights just the importance of your price and how it attracts a certain type of person. Now, this was earlier on in my business, but I was feeling really good because I had two proposals out in the same day. I was like, hey, this is really starting to work, right? And so I had two proposals out and the jobs were really pretty much identical. So I really sent out two of the same proposals. I just tweaked a couple things because that's both what they needed. And so both of them got back to me on the same day. They had the same price on their proposals and they both said no. Both of them, they both said no. I was baffled and I went to them and I said, why, what, you know, what, what happened? What, what made you say no, please tell me. And the first one said, you know, your price is just too low. I mean, if you're pricing me that low, that means that at some point you're going to come back and you're going to ask me for more money. You're going to tell me I need some other software. You're going to tell me there's something else you have to add onto the website and the cost is just going to go up. No, 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 no. This is everything. I promise you it's, it's here. I've, I've written this all out. This is everything that's included. No, sorry. Price is too low. I just, I just can't trust that. 
So I call up the next client, you know, what happened? What didn't you like? You know, why, why did you say no? Well, the price is just too high. I mean, it, it, it's just too much. I, I, I just can't do that. I, I just, I don't have that kind of money for a website. And so that's where you have to understand that no matter what you price your service, whether you're charging $500, $5,000, $10,000, there's always going to be businesses who say no because of your price and others who say yes because of your price. Your price is going to attract a certain type of person. So if you are charging $500 for a full-blown website, well, guess what? You're gonna get a $500 type of client and they're gonna be a pain in your you-know-what. So you have to know that that is who you are attracting. And by keeping that price low, you are also getting rid of, unintentionally, but you are getting rid of those potential clients who absolutely will pay you more because it's a red flag to them that the price is so low. So that either means you're not good enough, you're not gonna do what you say you're gonna do, you're just trying to get a little bit of money and run. There's something there for them that just makes it unbelievable. All right, number six, which actually has to do with pricing itself, but this requires a bit of internal work. And that is you are not charging higher prices because you yourself would not pay that much. Now, this is something I actually struggled with earlier on. We all have our things that are very important to us and we're willing to spend more money on where others would look at it and say, why would you spend all that money there? And the same things where we don't care about other areas and so we don't spend as much money there. And this is, is very true with our clients. So if it's something for us where we are looking at our service and we're saying, okay, well, if I need a website, here's how much I'd pay. If I need SEO, here's how much I'd pay. If I need such and such you know, Facebook ad service, whatever it might be, this is how much I would be willing to pay. And if it is not near your own price, it's really hard. So I think about this, like if I go out to dinner with a friend or family and they say, you know what, I'll take care of dinner, then you just go ahead and order whatever you want. So I'm like, okay, great. But when I look at that menu, I cannot in good conscience order more food than I'd be willing to pay for myself if I was the one footing the bill. So I can't say, okay, normally I would spend $15 on this meal, but because you're paying, well, now I'm gonna pay 30 or I'm gonna order a meal that's $30. So you see, it's the same thing here. If you yourself wouldn't buy a $5,000, a $10,000 website, you wouldn't spend $1,000 every single month for SEO. It is going to be much harder for you to charge that to a potential client, right? So that requires a bit more internal work of making sure that you see the value and that you understand the value. See, a lot of this starts from within. And if you understand your value, you understand how you are going to be uh, changing a business through the work that you do, well, you see, that's when it really is gonna help you sell your services more and feel more confident, sit a little bit taller when you are offering these services to clients. And finally, number seven, which can sting a little bit too, I'm sorry, but not sorry, is that you don't know what you're best at and you're a little bit all over the place and you are just trying to basically design your business around what these clients are telling you that you need. So if a client is saying, you know, I need web design, you're like, hey, hey great, I provide that, let's go, let's do this. And then they're like, oh, but you know, I really think I should do Facebook ads. Oh, do you know anybody who does graphic? How about, can you write content? And so you start scrambling, oh, wait, I could help them because I could earn a little bit more money, but wait, you know, shouldn't I be like the one-stop shop where they can come to me for everything? Because I don't want them going to anybody else. I want them to be able to do everything with me. And we really just start providing what a client tells us versus understanding first how we want our business to run. What is it that you really want to be known for? What is it that you enjoy doing most in your business? What is it that you feel that when you do this service, you add the most value to a client and to their business? And that's where you should start. You can wrap your entire business around just that one thing and you never have to expand outside of that and you can be extremely successful. Now, of course, you can choose to expand and that can be great too. But this really comes from an understanding of what it is that you want in your business and making sure that this is something you love and you feel yourself that you are providing the most value. Now, 
if you are new and you don't know. If you're sitting here thinking, well, this, I, I get this, but I don't know. I don't know what it is that I do best. Then that is your job right now. That is your job to go out and figure out how am I going to add value to these businesses? And one of the ways that you can do that is to figure out who it is that you want to serve. What do you think it would be fun to be known for? What could you see yourself doing and start there and start to build up uh, results in that way. All right, so there you have it. Those are the seven reasons why you may be attracting these low quality and low paying clients. I know some of them can sting a little bit, and some of these just really require some internal reflection, which, you know, doesn't always seem that fun. It doesn't necessarily seem like it's worth your time, but this is really where a lot of the work is at. And other than that, there's just some tweaks that you can make in your business and working with clients to make sure that you are able to attract those higher paying clients. So to pull it all together, those seven reasons are that you are looking for those low quality, low paying clients, even if you are doing so unintentionally. Number two is that you are attracting those low quality, low paying clients because that's all you believe that you are worth and that can be worked on. That is fixable and a lot of people go through that. Number three is through a lack of confidence, but you are now going to go out there and take action even though you don't have the confidence because that is what's going to bring it. Number four is your portfolio is full of these low quality clients. So you're going to swap that out and start being more intentional with who you put into your portfolio. Number five is your prices attract low quality clients and you are automatically weeding out those higher paying clients. So now you are going to increase those prices to better reflect the type of business that you want to work with. Number six is that you don't charge more because you yourself wouldn't pay more. And finally, number seven is you don't know what you're best at. And now you're going to go figure that out. So I hope this was helpful. Please let me know below in the comments what it is that you believe is holding you back from charging higher prices. And I'd love to hear what you're going to be working on to fix that. All right, until next time.